Turning to Second Corinthians chapter number 13. It's great to be born again. It's great to be born again. Hallelujah. Wonderful. You know, the Word of God gives us all the information we actually need. Many people spend their life on what they really do not need. You know, Jesus said to Matter, He said, you care about so many things, but only one thing is needful. Someone said that they went to a school and they studied 80% what they would not need in their life. 80% of what they learned was what they would never require. Only 20% was necessary. Praise God. Isn't it better to spend your life on the 20% that you require? Hallelujah. But you see, the life that Jesus has brought to us is wonderful. Sometimes when we preach or teach on things of this life, people wonder, they say, only heaven is necessary so long as I make heaven. No, God's word is not that way. God cares about your life on earth. God cares about your health. God cares about your job. God cares about your family. You know, when we get to heaven, you're not going to know somebody and say, Oh, this was my daughter when we were on earth. No such thing. That was my cousin. When you get there, you discover we're all cousins. No grandma, no grandpa. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Sure. But you see, God cares about your life on earth. He cares about your job. He cares about where you live. He cares about what you wear. He cares about what you eat. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, first he said, um, Take no thought, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear and so on and so forth. He said, for all these things the Gentiles seek after. But your father knows that you have need of them. So he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He didn't say, and that's all. He said, and all other things shall be added unto you. He didn't say, after seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then go seek all other things. He said, all other things shall be added unto you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we found out, if we got to know Jesus, and receive his life, and receive his righteousness, all other things would be added. And so we went to Jesus and got to know him and received him and received his life. And all other things have been added. Can you say amen? amen. Isn't that true? Yes. Sure. Maybe for a moment, First Timothy, First Timothy chapter number 4. And I want to read... Verse 7. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Did you see that? Exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Verse 8. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Now here's what I want you to see. The next line. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Can you see that? 
Praise the Lord. So, the word of righteousness that has been given to us has promise of the life that now is and the one that is to come. We are to be a success in this life and the life that is to come. Isn't that clear? You ought to have a good life now. You ought to prosper in this life. And also in the life that is to come. So the Bible says it has promised, godliness has promised of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Now, by the way, when he says the life that is to come, I want you to know that he's not just talking about heaven, he's talking about the spiritual life. Because the Bible says we have already tasted of the life that is to come, of the kingdom that is to come. That kingdom has the life now. When you are born again, you become a partaker of that kingdom. And the Bible says the Holy Ghost is the deposit. Glory to God. Don't you understand? We are already tasting of the life that is to come through the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. That kingdom is here, but in our hearts. That life is here, but in our spirits. And one day, it will come down to earth. Are you still there? But the life for that kingdom that is to come is in our hearts already. Hey, hey, hey. Am I saying strange things? Don't you know this is in the Word? Maybe we should check this again too. Are you ready? Mm. Turn to Hebrews chapter number 6. Hey, do you ever get turned on, you know? Just singing or whistling and just, just, just having a good time. Do you do that sometimes? Yeah. Just enjoy yourself. Just have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6. From verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. Hello? have what tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Another translation says the powers of the age to come. Now I don't want to continue. That's all I want to show you. Because a lot of people have questions there. And I have answers too. But not today. All right? Okay, so they have tasted. How could they have tasted if it was not possible to have tasted? Did you catch the point? All right, so back to First Timothy. It says, it has promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Praise God forevermore. Amen. All right, now today's subject, we are dealing or beginning to deal with the fellowship of the Spirit. The fellowship of the Spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 13, and I'm reading from verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Somebody had asked me, he said, what's the difference between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit? And I answered, King James. <laughs> Praise God. King James is the difference. Because in King James, old King James translation, you have it. Holy Ghost. For Holy Spirit. So, Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit mean one and the same thing. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit. It's just um, a different rendering. Ghost for Spirit, Spirit for Ghost. Hallelujah. 
Is that alright? So he's talking of the same person. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, people say this all the time. They say, let's share the grace. What about the love? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's share the grace. And they all go, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And they are going. They think it is what we should say to go away. Yes, Paul used it as his closing benediction for this second epistle to the Corinthian church. But that's not to say it is what you use for bye-bye. Do you understand? You can say it at the beginning of the service if you choose. Hallelujah. You can say it any time. But, but the reality of it is what I want to bring to your mind. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the communion of fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Paul wasn't asking God to give us something that he hadn't already given to us. This has come to be a great blessing by the Spirit of God because God also taught the priests of the Old Testament how to pronounce a blessing on the congregation. And they would say, may God make his face to shine upon you. May his light shine upon your path. And they would say all those wonderful things. May his blessings rest upon you. And everybody would say, Amen. Then, that will be all. And the priest will go. Hallelujah. But so Paul writes this. And says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. John tells us the law came by Moses. But grace and truth, grace and truth, or grace and reality came by Jesus Christ. The law came by Moses. But grace and reality came by Jesus Christ. In other words, the law did not reveal the person of the Father. The law did not reveal the character of God. It was a shadow of things to come. The Bible says the law was added because of transgressions until the seed should come. So it says grace and truth. Grace is favor beyond description. Favor unmerited. Favor Beyond the qualification of the subject. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Can you imagine that? He says grace and truth came by Jesus. Grace and reality. Letting us know that the grace of God unveiled the will and the character and the nature of God. So grace came by Jesus Christ. He has come to help us. He has come to lift us up. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we should live in His sight. Beyond your qualification. He has given you His qualification. He has qualified you with His qualification. He has brought you in. He said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath made us meet, qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has qualified me with his qualification. In other words, he gave me his results. Hallelujah. Don't you understand that? You know, I got my result and I failed. I failed so bad. I stood before God. I failed so bad. Then came one. His name is Jesus. Handed me another result. And said, you go in with that result. I said, my name is not there. He said, my name is there. I said, my name is not there. He said, but mine is there. Go in my name. Hallelujah. I said, this is fraudulent. He said, no, it's not fraudulent. The Father requires it to be so. Oh, glory to God. 
So I took that paper. And I thought they'll send me out if they did find me. No, they said there's only one name under heaven given amongst men. Whereby you can enter. I said, but that's not my name. No, it's the name Jesus. I said, I got the result, I got it. And I went in, glory to God. And I'm saved and I've been saved and I've got a song in my mouth. Glory to God. Say amen. amen. If you ever want to come to God with your qualification, you already failed. <laughs> if you think He's going to hear your prayer because you're so qualified, you know, you haven't done anything wrong, you're so good and so kind, and last week you were just perfect. I mean, you've never had a week like last week. I tell you, you've still failed. But you can stand there and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And you have it made. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory. Yes, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has brought us in. He has given us his own place. Paul said, for you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, for your sakes he became poor. That he through his poverty might become rich. That's for you in the now. For the now of your life. For you to understand this is the grace. This is the gospel that we preach. He said, for you know the grace, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9, for you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, though he was rich, for your sakes, think about it, this is grace, for your sakes, he became poor. In other words, he left his glory. For your sakes he became poor, that ye, through his poverty, might become rich. He didn't say for your sakes he became poor, that he might be like you. He didn't say for your sakes he became poor, that he might share your poverty. He has not come to share your poverty. He has not come to stay with you in your poverty. No, for your sakes he became poor, that he, through his poverty, might become rich. So what? Did he become poor? Yes. So what's supposed to happen to me? He became poor, that I, through his becoming poor, might become rich. So if he became poor, I have become rich. Glory to God. Boy, am I rich. Say, I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich. Because he became poor. Because he became poor. I'm, rich. I'm rich. He became poor. He became poor. I'm, rich. I'm rich. Praise the Lord. This is the grace of Jesus Christ. Somebody says, well, he is not talking about physical riches. He is talking about spiritual riches. Uh-uh! Don't you lie. Listen, the Bible says he became poor. Listen, he was never poor in the spirit. He was as much the son of God physically as he was spiritually. Never misunderstand that. And in the context of Paul's discussion in that letter, he was talking of material wealth. You see, I didn't think so. Now you're thinking so. The Bible says, godliness, in other words, spirituality, in other words, the righteousness that has come to us through the gospel, has promise of the life that now is, and the one that is to come. If a poor man reaches out and says, Lord, be Lord of my life, Jesus Christ, I believe in you. From that day, he starts flying him on eagle's wings, glory to God. You no longer move by your ability, you move by his ability. You no longer live in your name, you live in his name. Can you see that? And suddenly, you have new eyes to see. All things change for you. Oh, glory. Thank God, thank God. Amen. 
So he says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're supposed to live in that grace. We're supposed to take advantage of that grace. Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, Be strong therefore in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Which means take advantage of the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Take advantage of the grace. There is grace for you. Oh, come on. I said, there's grace for you. Somebody said, by my own errors, I have found me in this position. There is grace for you. Take advantage of the grace. You blew it. You messed up. Now, get up. Because there's grace for you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be with you. That's what Paul said. Live in it. Live in that grace. See yourself in the favor of God. Oh, hallelujah. Every day walk in the favor of God. Understand that you're favored. Yes, it has come to you by Jesus Christ. Oh, glory. I'm favored. See yourself. As the favored of the Lord. You are the favored of the Lord. Come on. Run your hand down like this and say, I am the favored of the Lord. I am the favored of the Lord. You understand what that means? Come on, are you getting something? Do you understand what that means? They say he's the president's friend. That guy's the friend of the head of state. Do you know what's going to happen to him? I mean, he's favored. You are the favored of the Lord. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That's what Paul said. Live in that grace. He said, be strong in that grace. Take advantage of that grace. Have you seen some folks? They say, well, I know him. I just, I don't, I don't want to write to him. I know if I ask him, he'll help me. But, you know, I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to do that. They are not taking advantage of that friendship. Do you understand? They are not strong in that friendship. They are weak in it. If I, if I, if I go to him, he'll help me. I know. But I don't want to. That same attitude sometimes is used to a God. In one breath we say, he can do all things. In another breath we say, he loves me. In another breath we say, he'll help me. Then, why don't you get up? Why don't you do it? Why don't you have it? Why don't you declare that you have it? I'm taking my time. I've some scores to settle. Suddenly, they back off. Take advantage of the grace. I said, take advantage of the grace. Tell somebody, take advantage of the grace. The grace grace of the Lord Jesus Christ Christ is beyond your qualification. Beyond your your merit. merit. His grace grace is for me. me. Amen. Amen. Look at this. I tell you, that man, when he wrote this thing, Under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, I tell you, he was excited to know this. He says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God be with you. The love of God. Don't underestimate the love of God. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. Come on, let's look at it. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Oh, have you ever been surrounded with God's flow of liquid love? Have you found yourself there? Swimming in His love. Have you found yourself there? I tell you, it's been there all the time. But I tell you, a lot of times we need to find ourselves in that experience of the love of God. Didn't you find who I told you? Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. Did you see it? 
He said, I've loved you with an everlasting love. That love does not diminish. That love does not change. That love, oh, you know, somebody said one time, when I was just born again, I knew God loved me, and I loved God, but somehow things, I, I did some wrong things, and somehow I don't really feel like God loves me so much anymore. It is an everlasting love. Love that doesn't change. It doesn't change because of what you've done. It doesn't change because of what you didn't do. It was there before you ever had enough sense to know it was there. Come on. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It says, but God commended his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Then he goes, if while we were sinners, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more now, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And the Bible says he is able to save to the uttermost them that come to God by him. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercessions for them. The love of God. Somebody say the love of God. The love of God. The love of God. 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 Say, I am the object of His love. I am the object of His love. love. His His everlasting love. His everlasting love. It cannot diminish. It cannot die. It will never change. It is everlasting. He loves you the same way. Whether or not you have done it. Whether you have done what he asked you to do or not. He still loves you. His love is unchanging. Everlasting love. Hello? I said everlasting love. Think about it. Everlasting. Everlasting. Listen to Everlasting love. They used to sing that song, you know. In the world, people act. It's another thing altogether. Someone who's not born again is really in the dark. Do you ever hear that song, Casey and the Sunshine Band, I think they said, uh, I will love you tomorrow. You just love me today. But I will love you tomorrow. But you love me today. But God never says, I will love you tomorrow. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. He didn't say qualify. If you do it like this, I'll love you more. If you do it like this, then I'll love you much more. No, he says, I've loved you with an everlasting love, unchanging love, undying love. Glory to God. Oh. No matter how small your head is, no matter how big your head is, no matter how small in stature you are, hallelujah, no matter how huge you are, no matter how fair, no matter how dark, no matter how wide your ears are, no matter how broad your nostrils are, God loves you with an everlasting love. Oh, to think of that is beyond the mind. God loves me. I am the object of his love. His love is directed toward me. Everlasting love. He surrounds me with his love. He said, keep me as the apple of thine eye. Hide me in the shadow of thy wing. 
Yes, to live in His presence. To live in His love. And be conscious of that love. Be conscious of that love. Be conscious of that love. As long as you're conscious of that love, you will never find yourself in the hand of the devil. Praise God. No, no oppression for you. Oppression shall be far from you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then the big one. He says, and the communion or the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you. The fellowship, the communion of the Holy Ghost. This is our heritage. Did you hear me? This is our heritage. This is something that is given to us. Something that Jesus had that's given to us. This is what you call the best of all. The presence of God with you. It says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion, the fellowship, the partnership of the Holy Spirit be with you. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit that has come to live with us and within us, to dwell with us, and to dwell in us. He has come to be our friend, our partner, our helper, our advocate, our strengthener. Can you say amen? amen. Our counselor, comforter, and standby. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. He's your standby. Amen. 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 He's your standby. Says the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you. The fellowship. Why is he there? To help you. Why is he there? You know when we say the Holy Ghost is there to help you, sometimes people don't understand how close he really is, how willing he is. This is his ministry. He loves to do it. You're not alone anymore. In St. John's Gospel chapter 14, Turn there quickly. Verse 18. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you orphans. That's another word for it. I will not leave you without a helper. I will not leave you without a father. Do you understand? I will not leave you comfortless. Without a paraclet, without one to go with you. In other words, you will not be alone. He says, I'll come to you. How? Through the Holy Ghost. Here he's not talking of the second coming. He's not talking of the rapture. He's talking of one that he speaks of in the 16th verse. Turn there, the 16th verse, same chapter, same book. And I will pray the Father, or ask the Father, and he shall give you another paraclete, comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. He shall give you another comforter. Let me have your amplified translation again. Praise the Lord. Listen to this. Let me read it to you from the Amplified. It's got the sevenfold reference here that I like. Letting us know the different synonyms that you find associated with the word paraclete in the Greek. That's rendered comforter, which is not enough to tell you what that word is all about in the English. So he gives us here. Amplified translations. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and stand by. This word means one that's called to go with you. If it's trouble, he will help you. If it's a pressure, he will help you. Can you say Amen. 
if, you're, if you have any case, he'll be your advocate. Can you say amen? amen. He's your lawyer. Oh, glory to God. You haven't understood this yet? He's your standby. When your faith seems to go weak, weak, he'll bring the word up in your spirit. And faith will come by the word. And suddenly you're strengthened. You're strengthened. Glory to God. Yes, when things look hopeless, he'll help you see. And you see beyond the trouble. He'll help you see. He's the one that says, look up. Look up. As far as your eyes can see, that have I given unto you. You say, all I can see is trouble. He say, yea. When the spirit of truth comes, he'll give you visions. So suddenly he'll give you a vision. And your eyes can really see. Glory to God. No, I will not leave you helpless. He knew that the world would become a tough place. He knew that there would be so much wickedness in the world. He said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But then he said, cheer up, I have overcome the world. Can you say amen? amen? He said, cheer up, no matter what you see, cheer up. Why? There's one who's going with you. I've sent one to be with you. Then he said, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. Allos Paracletos. Meaning, one that is exactly like me. Another comforter. Jesus was a paraclete. Now he sends another one that is exactly like him to be with you. You may not see him, but he's right there. You may not be able to touch him with your hand, but he's there. Can you say amen? amen? He said, he'll go with you. You are not an orphan. You are not helpless. There's one with you. He'll comfort you. He'll counsel you. He'll strengthen you. Glory to God. He'll argue your case. Can you say amen? amen. Come on, say amen. amen. And he'll be your standby. When you run out of strength, he'll be right there. Oh, glory. Glory. Yes. There's never a hopeless case for the Christian. No hopeless case. No hopeless situation. There's none. Tell somebody there's none. Absolutely none. You know, he said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And that God, with whom nothing is impossible, has come to abide with you and to be in you. Lazarus was sick. The sister sent a message to Jesus. They said, Master, please come in a hurry. The one whom thou lovest, the sick. Jesus said, I'll be right there. Then Lazarus died. Jesus delayed. Lazarus died. Jesus didn't come. Lazarus died. And they wept so. And Jesus, by the word of knowledge, knew. He said to his disciples, Lazarus is sleeping. <laughs> they said, Master, if he's sleeping, that's all right. He's resting. No, Lazarus is sleeping and I'm going to wake him up. No, they said, Master, if he sleeps, he does well. And Jesus had just come from there, from that area, several days before. And they almost killed him. They wanted to kill him. He escaped from their hands. So he said, I want to go and wake him up. He said, Master, let him sleep. He said, you don't understand. Lazarus is dead. Oh. Now you want to go there? Then they said, Peter, James, John, let's go and die with you. And Jesus went there. At the entrance of the city, they heard that Jesus had come. The sister ran to Jesus and welcomed him and said, Master, if you had been here four days ago, my brother would not have died. True. 
Isn't that wonderful? She knew it. She had expected Jesus. As Lazarus took his last breath and he struggled on that bed. Oh, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Is he dead? No, not yet. Oh, if the master would only come. Is, is he still breathing? Yes. Oh, Jesus. Did you, are you sure you told him? I sure told him. Are you sure you saw him? Can you describe him? I, I, I told him. All right. And, mm, and he was gone. And they wept so. They pulled their hair. They jumped. They, oh, they hit the floor and cried and cried and cried. Until they couldn't cry again. No more strength to cry. It's been four days now. And here comes Jesus. Master, if you had been here four days ago, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, Yeah, your brother will rise again. I know, sir. He'll rise again on the resurrection on the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He said, Do you believe that? She said, I know that you are the Christ that should come into the world. Where have you laid him? He went there. Lazarus had been buried. A stone rolled about the cave. He was there bound in grave clothes. And Jesus stepped aside to pray and thank the Father. He said, I thank you that you've heard me. What did the Father hear when Jesus said, your brother shall rise again? The Father heard him. He said, I thank you that you hear me always. Now I speak, that these ones here may believe. Came to the entrance and said, roll the stone away. Oh, they said, Master, by now he stinks. It's been four days. By now he stinks. He said, didn't I tell you that if you would believe, you'd see the glory of God? Roll the stone away. And some of them men came there and rolled that great stone away. Four days ago, the man died. Brothers and sisters, it was too late. He cried out, Lazarus, comfort! He is the resurrection and the life. Lazarus, oh glory! Lazarus heard his voice. He had been in Hades, in Abraham's bosom. He heard the voice of the master. He came right out of Hades, got into his body in the cave and stood up at the voice of the Son of God. He said, come forth. Lazarus came out of the grave. It was too late, but not with Jesus. It's never too late. A man's daughter was sick. Send a message. Oh, I've got to go to Jesus. Where is he? And he went. My daughter is sick. Very sick. Please come and heal her. Jesus said, I'll come. On his journey, the servants came and they said, No need to trouble the master. She's dead. Bad news. You know what they're saying? It was all right for you to have gone to Jesus. You've tried your best, sir. But it's too late. It's too late. What happened? The little girl is dead. Jesus looked at him. He said, Fear not, only believe. Only believe. The man just shut up. No crying. He didn't let him cry. He said, fear not. Only believe. They went there. And everybody was crying. <laughs> Let it go. Dad. 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 They're all 
all crying. And Jesus came, stood there. They were professional mourners. They had already been paid to come. <laughs> Professional mourners. And when Jesus came, he said, Everybody out. And they stopped their crying. And they said, What in the world does he think he is? And the girl's grandma and grandpa were inside there. He's a grandma, grandpa, out. And the other grandma and grandpa, out. What does he think he is? The uncle was there. Uncle, out. What in the world does that man think he is? Run out. Then he stepped in. Tobiah, I say unto thee, arise. And the girl sat up. Give us some food to eat. And then he came out. And they were looking at him. Then they had... Should we run to the girl? Should we run to Jesus? Now it was time for laughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's never too late. I said it's never too late. I said it's never too late. A woman lost her uterus. She got born again. And she said, I'm just going to be plain honest. I'll never marry. The man fell in love with her, born again. And she said, we can't get married. The man said, we can get married. Oh, she said, you don't understand. I cannot have a child. Oh, that's simple. Haven't you read of barren women in the Bible? Uh-uh. This is not barrenness. This is something different. I cannot have a child. The man said, we can get married. Well, finally, she agreed to get married, but you know, what are we going to do? No children? He said, we're going to have children. I said, I lost my uterus. Don't you understand? There was an operation. I messed up my life before I got born again. My uterus was removed. He said, if any man be in Christ... He's a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Well, he persuaded her. They got married. Shortly afterward, she had stomach pain. And it wouldn't go. And they rebuked it. It wouldn't go. They laid hands on it and it wouldn't go. They had to go to the doctor. This was four years later. Doctor had forgotten her. It happened to have been the same doctor that performed the operation. Well, he said, Woman, don't you know you're pregnant? She said, No. I know it's a tumor. He was offended because all these young ladies that run all over the place getting pregnant and then they come and say they don't know they're pregnant. So he was offended. He said, she said, doctor, do you remember me? I cannot be pregnant. It's not pregnancy. I have a tumor. I need an operation. Doctor said, hold on. Looks like I know you. 
What's that name again? He heard my former name and he went to his fire. He couldn't believe it. Brought the fires out. The tumor had been removed. Took off his glasses. You cannot be pregnant. <laughs> no, we gotta perform a test. Now he performed the test and had God blow his mind up. He couldn't believe it. He said it's impossible. But whoa, brothers and sisters, she gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where did the uterus come from? It is never too late. Hallelujah. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. When He is with you, nothing is impossible. For all things are possible. Nothing is too late. I said nothing is too late. Nothing is too late. Hallelujah. You say, I don't believe that. I got news from what happened recently. You're going to see the woman on air soon. The son gave the testimony himself. He had to find a church and give the testimony. Glory to God. He's about 20 years old. And the mother couldn't have more children. And finally got pregnant. And was pregnant for 13 months. It's supposed to be nine months, is that right? She was pregnant with a child for 13 months. It became dangerous. The doctor said we have to operate because if we do not operate, the woman will die and the baby in the womb will die. But if we operate, we may have the chance of saving the baby, but the woman will die. So operation, mother will die, baby may be saved. No operation, baby will die, mother will die. Choose. And the husband, you know, what's he going to do? If they do not operate, she's going to die. And the baby will die. If they operate, she's going to die. But the baby may leave. Difficult situation. What a decision to be made. There's no way out. That's what the doctor is saying. No way out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, not to Abraham. Against hope. The man believed in hope. Well, the husband had to sign the the wife's death sentence. He accepted it. They can have the operation. At least we have a chance of getting a baby. Because if we don't have the operation, the boat going to die. And they were ready, preparing for the operation. When they got the woman ready, she said, I'd like to see my son before I die. They sent for her son. The grown-up one. And the son came and said, Mommy, what's going on? No, no, you're not going to have the operation. No, 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 no operation. He wouldn't let them have the operation. He disturbed them so much until the doctor said, You can get out with your mother. Took his mother away. No operation. You're going to watch atmosphere for miracles. <laughs> Took her home to watch atmosphere for miracles. If you've never heard that, that's our TV program. If we operate, the woman's going to die. The baby may be saved. If we don't operate, the woman's going to die. And the baby is going to die. The guy said, what do you lose? You don't lose anything. If they operate, you die. 
If they don't operate, you die. Hey, but the baby may be saved. Huh? Not 100% chance. Took her home. And then we came on the television. Watching atmosphere for miracles. The woman was right there in the sitting room watching. Then we got to the time of prayer. And the guy went into the bathroom. And while he was in the bathroom, Mama cried. And he came out nude, flying out of the bathroom, thinking, Mama's dying. Only to come into the sitting room and find Mama's given birth to a child. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a miracle. She gave birth right in front of the screen. Mommy is alive. Baby is alive. It's never too late. Oh, not with Jesus. I said it's never too late. Never too late. With Him, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Close your eyes right there and say it is possible. Whatever it is you desire from God, it is possible. 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 possible. It's not too late. Somebody may say it's too late. It may be called a hopeless situation. But against hope, we believe in hope. Nothing is impossible. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the communion of the Holy Ghost. Yes. The fellowship of the Holy Ghost. He's our helper. He's our comforter. He's our counselor. He's our advocate. He's our strengthener. He's our standby. We cannot lose glory to God. He's made us more than conquerors. Oh, hallelujah to his name forever. Hallelujah to his name. Anything is possible. Glory to His holy name. It's not too late. It's not too late. You have a helper. It's not too late. It's not too late. With men, these things are impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. Glory to His name forever. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Worship Him and praise Him. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. He is the resurrection and the life. Grace is sufficient for you. His love is in abundance. It's not too late. It's not too late. Glory to God. Worship Him and praise Him. Worship Him. Yes, honor and majesty surround you. Praise His holy name. Worship Him. Glory to God. Worship Him. Here in another topic, Pastor says we always win. According to Second Corinthians chapter two verse fourteen, it says now, thanks be unto God, which always caused us to triumph in Christ. And make it manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. Glory to God. There is a reason for the church being the most persecuted of the demographics in the world. Satan is terrified of us. Therefore, he is making so much effort to cause fear in the hearts of many. But he is a failure. Oh, hallelujah. The mighty things that are happening in with 
and through the church of Jesus Christ in our day are even about to be taken to a higher level. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The word gates is symbolized in prophetic language for power and dominion. The powers and dominions of hell shall not and can never prevail against the church. Hallelujah. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. The church, right from inception, has survived and endured many terrible persecutions and will always outlive our enemies and detractors. That's because the word of God is there. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long.